Hello guys and gals and welcome. So have you ever asked yourself the question in Diablo 2? Is crafting worth it? The answer to that question is unequivocally yes. Crafted items can be among some of the most powerful items in the game that you can make for your character. And uh, although there are some recipes in the crafted world that um, are not very good, there are, however, also some recipes that are extremely good. Now, it's a lot like gambling, though, because you never really know exactly what you're going to get. However, by using a specific recipe, you can control some of the variables, not all, but some of the variables. And I'd like to go over with you kind of briefly um, some of those variables, which ones are worth crafting, which ones are maybe not, and which ones end up being the most valuable. And I'll also show you a couple examples of, uh, you know, some very nice crafted amulets and, and things like that. Um, first off, let's go over the number of properties that you can get from the crafted items. Um, so it is important to note that there are specific levels where things change. Um, and uh, the optimal level for each individual crafted item is going to be a little bit different. Um, I usually wait until I'm around level 93 to 95 before I start crafting uh, to get the optimal bonuses on everything that I'm crafting. Although that is not required for everything that you craft. Um, each individual type of item has different modifiers and those modifiers are, you know, having specific level requirements. And so being level 95 is the optimal level for essentially all modifiers. Uh, once you're level 95 and you craft an item, you can get every single modifier basically in the game at that point. Um, now, there are specific things that go on when crafting items uh, that have high Q levels. So for instance, right here, you see how it says a Q level of level 86. Uh, you might be wondering what the hell it's talking about. Uh, but a Berserker Axe is a relatively high-level item. So even if you are a low-level character trying to craft with this Berserker's Axe, because the Berserker Axe has a minimum level requirement, essentially, it cannot drop below that level, so it's stuck at 86 or higher. Even if you were, say, like a level 78 character when you crafted the item. Now, what do you need to get into crafted items? Well, it's pretty simple. And uh, let's start with some caster items, because they tend to be the most popular. And uh, let's go to probably what is the most popular crafted rune word in the game. Or, sorry, <laughs> rune word. Crafted, uh, that would be cool, crafted rune words. Um, crafted uh, recipe in the game, which is the caster amulet. Um, now, as you can see, it doesn't really cost a lot. Um, it is a magic amulet. Um, and the magic amulet does matter where it comes from. So the item level of the amulet is also a factor here, as well as the character level of your character. Now, what I generally like to do is I like to gamble my amulets. That way, um, they are being gambled with the same character that is crafting the item. So the I level of the amulet and the C level of my character are the same. So my level 99 character, for instance, that I have this season um, can buy a magic amulet with the highest eye level possible. And then I can craft it using that high eye level or C level character, getting me pretty much every single modifier that I can possibly have. Now, increasing the number of modifiers that you have is not always a good thing. Um, you know, like, because it's like a gambling thing, right? So the more numbers you have in the pot, the less chance you're going to get the numbers specifically that you want. And so sometimes when it comes to crafting, you're better off customizing exactly what level you want for exactly what modifiers you want. Now, with the caster amulet, the reason why this amulet is so popular is because, as I was talking about earlier, choosing a recipe means that you can choose to limit the variables. So what are you limiting the variables to with the caster amulets? You are limiting the variables to 5 to 10% faster cast rate, regeneration of mana 4 to 10%, and a bonus mana of 10 to 20. This means that these modifiers have to be on the item. They cannot not spawn on the item. Now, they will roll between the respective numbers, so you won't always get 10%. 
Now, the really interesting thing that goes on with caster amulets is that these roles are separate from any other roles that the amulet may have. So, for instance, if an amulet were to normally roll with 10% faster cast, that would be a separate roll from this 10% faster cast. And because of that, you end up with a total of possibly 20% faster cast. And uh, to give you an example, I'm going to pull up a pretty sexy caster amulet. Give me just a second. So this particular amulet, am amulet was uh, traded off by Ang Song Klu 905. Uh, he actually posted this one for us. And as you can see, this is a crafted paladin amulet. Very, very sexy. Not only did it roll plus two paladin skills, which is very important, it also rolled 10% faster cast, and it rolled 10% faster cast on the actual blood recipe for a total of 20%. Um, it got a very nice roll on the strength with 20 and 86 mana with the 10% uh, regenerate mana as well, which is also cap for the amount of mana that it gets. Um, the 86 mana is combined with the 10 to 20 that rolls on the blood, which means that it also rolled mana as well, which combined together with that mana effect, adding to even more mana. Um, and this is just one of the many, many, many amulets that you could make, many, many crafted items that you could make that are absolutely amazing. And there are tons of fun things that you can do, like uh, caster rings are pretty cool if you can get yourself a very nice caster ring. Um, caster amulets, as we just went over, absolutely great. And as you can see, we have pretty common recipes here. Um, with this particular one, you notice perfect amethyst, perfect amethyst, perfect amethyst. So all caster ref recipes are going to require perfect amethysts. Um, we also have, of course, the magic amulet or the magic ring, um, which, like I said before, I usually just like to gamble. And then uh, any jewel has to be... Um, magic or rare and of course jewels can only be magic or rare um i've actually tested this with rare jewels it works with rare jewels too just don't transmute a bunch of jewels that are actually worth stuff you know take a look at the jewels and make sure you're not just destroying nice ones um and then the only thing that really changes between the caster recipes is the rune required so as you can see the ring requires an am the uh caster amulet requires a row um, and if you go up and you take a look at the caster belt, that one is also pretty nice uh, with an ith rune. Um, you could make some pretty nice caster belts because these have 10% faster cast on them, potentially. And uh, not only that, but a little bit of regen and some mana as well. And if you can get them with some really nice modifiers, like for instance, uh, faster hit recovery, um, strength, life, mana, so forth and so on, you can uh, usually end up with a pretty sweet little belt. Um, and uh, occasionally you can get it with like one or two, sometimes even three resistances, depending on how well it rolls. Um, caster boots can also be very nice. Um, I've uh, seen a lot of characters make some pretty nice caster boots. Another very uh, good one is blood items. So uh, the blood gauntlets, which is one of the best ones, in my opinion, as far as crafting recipes goes. Um, these are absolutely excellent because, number one, they can roll crushing blow of 5 to 10%. They can also roll lifesteal up to 3%, and uh, they have a decent amount of life on them as well. Now, the lifesteal can actually stack with lifesteal that comes from the gloves themselves, so you can end up with a very nice pair of 6% lifesteal gloves, and you can have 10% crushing blow. Uh, which is a very nice combination for pretty much any melee or range character. Um, having 10% CB and 6% lifesteal is already going to be great. Now, um, I'm going to give you guys an example real quick. Uh, here's a pair of Shadow Knuckles that were crafted using the Blood Recipe. Um, and as you can see here, they have rolled exceptionally well. Uh, they have plus two javelin and spear skills, which this can roll into a couple different things. You can end up with plus two jav, you can get plus two bow and crossbow, you can get plus two passive and magic, which does have some use now with the spears on. And um, just in general, that plus two skill is absolutely excellent to get on a pair of gloves. 
However, it usually needs to be accompanied by 20% increase to tax speed because all of these classes are generally looking for that increase in their tax speed as well. Um, it rolled with 3% life, so it was cap on the life steal for the blood recipe, but did not get the additional 3%. Um, it has 9% crushing blow, so 1% off of perfect. And then it has a little bit of defense, some strength, and it rolled 17 on the life, which isn't too bad for the blood recipe. And as you can see, just a absolutely solid pair of gloves. Now, these are missing resistances, and this is definitely something that can change depending on how your roll is going to go. But uh, keep in mind that um, when you're crafting blood gloves, um, there is a potential that you can end up with something just as amazing as this, if not even a little bit better than this pair of gloves. Um, and, uh, and that's why blood gloves tend to be a very, very awesome recipe. Um, there are other blood items that you can make that are pretty good too, uh, like for instance the blood rings. Uh, blood rings tend to be pretty sweet, and uh, it really comes down to the fact that they're guaranteed lifesteal, uh, which means that you end up with a lot of dual leech rings. I'm going to see if I can find you a good example of those as well. So here's a good example of a uh, pretty decent craft for a uh, blood ring. And um, you, we, what we have here is we have attack rating, which is very important if you're a melee or ranged character. Now, not every character needs attack rating. So don't immediately toss a blood ring just simply because it doesn't have attack rating. There are certain characters that don't care about attack rating at all and would much rather have other stats instead. Um, however, we do have a dual leech here, so it's a 6%, 3%. Now, it could be a little bit better on the life leech, uh, but a 6% mana leech ring is actually very, very nice and can sustain a lot of characters. Specifically, my freezing arrows on this season needed 16% uh, mana leech to sustain, so uh, every bit of mana leech was absolutely uh, needed. And uh, as you can see here, we also got not only with uh, attack rating and dual leech, we got 25 strength, which is pretty amazing, a little bit of life with 19, and a resistance, which is fire resist 24%. Now, you can also get other things, like you can get all resistances, you can get minimum damage, uh, you can get all sorts of very cool effects. And I have another ring here, which is um, not a dual leech ring, but it is a very interesting ring in the way that blood rings can roll. And, uh, and this one particularly has to do with uh, minimum damage. So uh, this one is the Rune Whirl, and of course the name doesn't really matter. It's uh, it's random uh, when you create the ring. Um, but as you can see here, we have um, nine to min damage, and I've crafted a couple rings like this, by the way. Um, quite a few, actually. Um, this is uh, nine to min, 46 attack rating, 2% life steal. So what we have here is we have a, a minimum damage, which is at basically the cap. I'm pretty sure nine is cap for rare and crafted rings. Um, and this is extremely good for characters that are building minimum damage. Uh, we also have three strength, 15 dex, 16 life, and seven all res. Now this could have rolled a little bit better. The, the life steal could have been higher. It could have been dual leech, for instance. Um, the strength could have been higher, the decks could have been higher. Um, the resistances, the all res, I believe that rolls as high as 11 for uh, rare rings. And, um, and this is the kind of stuff that you are, are going to be looking for. Um, now, there are some other interesting things that you can make, like uh, blood amulets. Now, blood amulets um, have the uh, passive effect here of 5 to 10% faster run walk with life leech and life. Now, the faster run walk is really interesting because there are characters that will build a faster run walk character. And um, if you can get yourself like a perfect faster run walk amulet, that's the kind of thing that can definitely make or break those faster run walk characters because you can get a, for instance, you could have this amulet crafted and you could wind up with plus two to skills, um, faster cast. You could end up with faster, uh, the 10% faster run walk, uh, all resistances. Um, and by the time you're done, the amulet that comes out of something like this could be absolutely insane. And this is, this is really what it comes down to is you choose the recipe to have the effect that you're looking for. Um, and of course you're going to have to collect the, uh, the perfect rubies, the am runes, uh, the soul runes for your blood rings, and uh, and of course for the gloves, it's nef runes, and uh, that's one of the reasons why you'll see a lot of people 
grabbing their runes. Now, um, as you can see here, though, you see it says heavy gloves, shark skin gloves, or vampire bone gloves. And earlier I was talking about gambling the rings and amulets as the basis for your crafts. Um, you can gamble shark skin and vampire bone gloves by buying the heavy gloves, and there is a percent chance that it will change into the shark skin or the vampire bones. Um, I would not recommend crafting heavy gauntlets. Um, it's just, they don't really have a lot of defense, and it's just not really worth it. At, at least do the shark skins, um, if not the vampire bones. Um, because, honestly, the defense on the shark skins is way better than the heavy gloves. Um, there are some other ones, of course. Like, for instance, the Hit Power Gloves are actually pretty popular. Um, and the reason why the Hit Power Gloves are actually really popular is for knockback. So if you are a ranged character, most notably Amazons using a bow, or a specific character who needs knockback for some reason, and you would like to have knockback added into your character, um, imagine, if you will, something very similar to the gloves that I showed you earlier, because I don't have a uh, screenshot of a pair of Hit Gloves. Um, but if we're looking at these, which is the javelin and spear gloves, uh, basically take away the, uh, crushing blow and instead add the knockback. Um, this would be a very powerful set of gloves for a javazon or boson. Um, specifically, uh, that knockback can come extremely handy in keeping those monsters away from you while you're firing your multi-shot or your strafe or, or whatever it is that you're using on your ranged character. Now, granted, these are not generally desirable for melee characters. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, there's really not a lot going on on this particular tree that I like to make um, as far as crafts goes. The hit power tree is a little odd. Um, the boots aren't like entirely terrible because they do have the 5% chance to cast level four Frost Nova Windstruck. And if you can craft a decent pair of boots that has, you know, like a faster run walk, faster hit recovery and some resistances, um, it's nice to have the Frost Nova Windstruck on there because it does, um, help you out just a little bit. Um, everything else on this one is a little not so great. Like I don't usually mess around with any of this stuff. You could potentially try and make yourself the hit power ring. Uh, try and go for one of those like dual leeches with some interesting effects. Um, and like I said, it does have the Frost Nova Windstruck again. Frost Nova Windstruck is, is a surprisingly good defensive mechanic um, because it chills everything around you. And, um, and obviously it triggers when you get beat up. So the more you get beat up, the more it triggers and the more it tries to save your life, uh, which is handy. Now, safety items are uh, actually very interesting, and there is one particular recipe in here that I have uh, rather enjoyed uh, trying to get, like, a sick amulet with, and that is the safety amulet. Uh, the safety amulet uses Thal runes, and this uh, the safety recipes all use uh, perfect emeralds. Uh, but basically, the reason why I'd like to make this recipe is because of the 1 to 10% chance increased blocking, which severely lowers the total dexterity requirement for any character that is using the amulet. Uh, that 10% increased block is a huge percentage comparatively to how much dexterity you would have to put in to obtain that same amount. And that means that you don't have to put in as much dexterity into that to hit the 75% block chance, which means that you can take that dexterity and put it into your vitality instead. Uh, so if you can get yourself a absolutely godlike safety amulet, you know, plus two skills, 10% blocking, uh, all resistances, a little bit of strength, a little bit of life, you know, so forth and so on, you can uh, walk away with a very, 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 very nice amulet uh, that is going to not only increase your life by reducing the uh, cost to increase your blocking to 75% chance, but it's going to make you far tankier in the process. Gives you a little bit of DR, gives you a little MDR, gives you blocking, and of course, you know, depending on what the modifiers are, can be even more sexy. Uh, the safety shield is actually the only item in the game that has magic resistance, so um, it's very interesting to point that out. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that... Um, you need to do like that shield for anything. I just 
thought it would be a nice little like thing to point out is that the the safety shield is the only shield in the game that has magic resistance. It's the only item in the game that has magic resistance actually. So um you know like if you ever wanted to just like for some reason have some extra magic resistance, well there you go. That's that's how you can do it. And uh, not all of these are going to be useful. Um, the safety helm is kind of garbage. The safety boots are there. I mean, you could make them if you wanted to, but I don't really know if they're going to be really that great. Um, the safety gloves don't really have anything special on them, um, except for the enhanced defense and the cold res. Uh, and so what it really comes down to is the safety amulet, honestly. Like, it's really one of the better ones. Now, the safety ring is not, like, absolutely horrible with its 1 to 5 vitality and its DR and MDR. But if you're going to craft rings, you'd probably just be better off doing the blood ring, which has life, lifesteal, and strength. Um, or even the caster ring, which we were talking about earlier, which has energy, regenerate mana, and uh, plus to mana. Um, overall... I mean, there definitely are some very sexy caster recipes, which is one of the reasons why you will find that um, people so highly value their perfect amethysts. Perfect amethysts are required for all caster recipes, so everybody wants those. Um, the blood items, there are several blood items. The blood ring, the blood amulet, and also the blood gloves. And honestly, even the blood belt is not halfway bad with the open wounds 5 to 10%. So as you can see, perfect rubies are also relatively well sought after, uh, which is the reason why you can trade perfect gems for items. Like in the game, if you've ever actually played around with it and when you know went into a game and traded, you can be like, okay, I got 40 P gems for, you know, such and such item. And people will come in and they will give it to you because they want to try and craft these items. And to give you an idea of how valuable these items can be, I happen to know for a fact how many runes this particular amulet that I showed you earlier traded for. So if you uh, if you're interested in this sort of thing and you're you're just you're thinking like oh well they can't be worth that much right they can't be worth that much but this particular amulet the plus two paladin amulet that I showed you earlier which I have now lost the screenshot for Really, really can't find the screenshot. This is amazing. There it is. Uh, it's this one in particular. I actually pulled this up um, from my video. Um, he said that he sold this back in February slash March. Uh, I don't know why he has slash March again. Maybe it was toward the end of the month. Uh, but um, he said he sold it for thirty three burr runes. Okay. That is the kind of value that you can potentially get. And so if that doesn't explain to you why people are willing to trade items for the perfect gems, I don't know what will. Because people really, really, really want to have, you know, something like this. This is, this is the, like the amazing stuff that you could potentially craft with, uh, you know, with these recipes. And, and I have spent countless hours crafting um you know for the kinship as a whole um and usually what i do is i pretty much just give the items to the kinship i'm i'm more interested in decking out our kinship with you know like all the 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 bedazzled gold and platinum chains and everything so uh so i'm i'm looking to to enrich our group but um you know if you were crafting and you ended up with something like this well, you know, you've pretty much just decked out all your characters in Enigmas, um, got like full equipment for every single character that you ever wanted at a point. I mean, granted, not perfect gear because that is a piece of perfect gear, the the, the Paladin I mean, that I just took off of there. And, um, but it's like really, it's really rare. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not going to tell you guys that you're going to get into this crafting and like the first amulet that you make is going to be worth 33 burrs because that's not how it works. It wouldn't be worth 33 burrs if it was easy to get. 
All right. But the question that we asked ourselves at the beginning of this video is, is crafting worth it? And the answer to the question is yes, unequivocally yes. There are definitely 100% some amazing, ridiculously amazing items that you can craft and have very high value, uh, not only just to you, but also a trade value to other players. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, and I hope that I've uh, enlightened you guys a little bit about crafting. And for those of you who may have never dived into crafting, maybe now you will. Um, as always, thanks for watching, and uh, keep watching.